Hello, and welcome back to this YouTube channel that I abandoned for like six months because I got a job and then I got another job and anyway, I'm back. I have a half day from that second job. Anywho, today we're going to be making a medieval fantasy dress. Why is it a medieval fantasy dress, you may ask? Well, that is because I wanted to make a medieval dress. I set out to do all the historical research and I looked at all the medieval dresses and they were ugly. They weren't... They weren't good. It was not a pretty time. I didn't want to wear it, um, but I wanted to feel medieval. So we're just, it's a fantasy world. Anything I want is fine, including ugh, stretch velvet, of which I have 10 yards that I bought online on sale to become the dress. Um, and the other thing I have is this trim that was initially gifted to me my sophomore or junior year of high school um, by some kids I knew who went to India and brought back all of their female friends earrings but I didn't have pierced ears so they brought me back this trim from a fabric merchant that they visited in India because they said they thought I'd like it better which I did but I haven't had any use for it for the past like six years since I got it because uh, it just doesn't go with most things I make, but I thought it would go well on this, and I'd finally get to use it. Um, I have a sketch, but I have not colored it in yet because I'm lazy. Um, but as you can see, square neckline, floor length dress, big sleeves, open sleeves so that the arms are going to show, and then that trim around the neckline and the waist is the plan. For the bodice, I'm going to be using a pattern that I already have and just altering it a bit. Probably the same for the sleeves, though that's going to be altered more. And then the skirt, I'm just going to wing it. That's how I do most skirts. I don't, I just kind of cut and measure and it's like, it goes on your legs. Um, so anyway, let's get started. So here I am crawling around my living room floor trying to get this fabric laid out evenly and I wanted it folded over once and because this fabric was so slippery and so stretchery, it was pretty difficult to get it to lay flat with no wrinkles, no bunching, but I eventually managed to get it to where it was good enough. And then I laid out those bodice pieces and I held them down with decks of cards that were nearby because I don't believe in pins or buying pattern weights. And then I crawled on top of an ottoman to cut them out because I am too lazy to move the ottoman out of my way, I would rather move my way around the ottoman. I'm also just using my regular sewing scissors instead of pinking shears to cut this out. You see me using pinking shears a lot because it cuts down on fraying, but a knit fabric like this is not going to fray, so I was not worried about that. The next thing I had to do was to cut out the skirt, and so the first thing I did for that was to measure my waist. And you may ask, Julia, you make dresses all the time. Don't you know how big your own waist is? And the answer is no, I don't. Because one, I always forget, and two, it changes a lot. So I measure it every single project I do, because it's quick and easy and zero dollars, because I don't charge myself anything. Then I freehanded a curve for the waist and then measured down equally from there to a curve that I also freehanded for the hemline. And I'm going to take this opportunity now while we're watching this footage that I don't really have a voiceover for to apologize for the fact that this voiceover quality is pretty low because I forgot my headphones that have my microphone at my house and I am dog sitting. Well, now those panels are all cut out, or actually it's probably just one because I cut it on the fold. And now I am scooting the fabric down, doing a little bit of fabric folding yoga there. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is use that skirt that I already had cut out as a pattern piece and lay it on top of this now nicely smoothed and folded patch of fabric and just cut out an identical one. So that curve that I traced is one quarter of my waist because these are two pieces cut on the fold. And now it's time to get to my absolute favorite part of this dress, and that is the sleeve. So you can see that I have a grocery bag. Oh, 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 that's two grocery bags. Okay, but now I've just got one. And on the ground next to me, you can see a sleeve pattern. So I'm going to cut open this grocery bag using these tiny scissors because I was trying to be a good sewing person and not use my fabric scissors on paper. And so now I am going to trace out this pattern piece onto the paper, but I am going to basically have it start and end in different places. A sleeve is basically a tube. Those two ends connect, but I don't want that to be where my sleeve breaks. I want my sleeve to break in the front. So I'm going to put the edge that is sort of the front on the edge of the paper and then move that over and trace it so it continues on and breaks at a different point. I don't 
really know if that made sense, but maybe when I cut it out and hold it up, you will be able to look at it and understand what I mean. Maybe, possibly. Pulling off the handle there. Honestly, I was probably as confused making this as you guys are watching this. Okay, look, like, yeah, so it's a different kind of sleeve that kind of looks like a whale, I guess. Yeah, that's a whale. I'm going to coin that term. These are whale sleeves. Um, yeah, when I'm a famous designer, you guys can tell everyone that I taught you how to make whale sleeves. Okay, so then I laid out fabric on there. Oh, I decided I wanted another skirt panel. Did I? That sounds like me. Yep, clearly I decided I wanted another skirt panel. Wow, I should have washed this before deciding to do the voiceover. Okay, so I cut out another skirt piece because I'm indecisive and I realized I had enough fabric to do that. And now I'm gonna shimmy that fabric down and look at that, all of that is left over for sleeves. I am really famous for making dresses that have no sleeves that are just tank tops because I usually don't buy enough fabric and then wanna make the dress long and so sacrifice sleeves. And then I just say that I'm really into pinafores, but it's a lie, I just don't ever buy enough fabric. So this time I purposely bought enough fabric because it was 60% off and I could. Ooh, that is me measuring from my shoulder to the ground because I wanted floor length sleeves which I had never worn before but I thought it would be really fun. So then I just put that sleeve pattern down and I'm basically gonna, gonna do the same thing I did on the skirt where I just measure down flaring it out a little bit from that pattern piece because I didn't think it was worth it to make the whole pattern piece. I have more footage and I don't have more relevant things to say, so I'm going to tell you the story of the shirt I'm wearing. It says Beloit Famous on the front and Beloit is the college I went to and they gave this to me because I was in a commercial type thing that they put online and I thought it was really cool and I was really proud of myself, but then they put it on and everybody on campus started being like, oh, you're a sellout. Like, when did you sell out to the man? doing a commercial for our college and then I was really embarrassed but I wear the shirt not around other boy people because I figure then they'll think that I was cool and like famous in college and it was actually one of the like seven shirts I brought with me when I went to study abroad because I was like okay now everybody in England is going to think that I was like cool in America when I was not have never been cool in America but I thought maybe I could convince Europeans I was cool with this shirt and it didn't work in Europe either so the moral of the story is don't have dreams don't be in commercials for your college don't try to be famous or pretend you're famous and don't take this much footage cutting out sleeves after all of that cutting out, I was a little bit tired, so I decided to scroll on my phone and then eat some pizza and then I took a bath, but I did not film the bath part because it's not that kind of channel, and then I got back to sewing. Any good seamstress knows that the most important part of sewing is the sewing show. So the sewing show I was enjoying here is called Northern Exposure. It's from the 90s. It's very good. And I started with sewing the sleeves shut. And why was I doing that, you might ask? Because I intended for the sleeves to be open. And the answer is because I'm dumb. So that's me taking it out and seam ripping apart a lot of stitches from velvet, which was very hard. I did not enjoy that, but... It's just one of those things that you have to endure when you like sewing. So. I'm sparing you a lot of seam ripping footage and just skipping ahead to when I was sewing together the rest of the bodice and the other sleeve. And this bodice has some pleats in the pattern and I did not do them because I wanted to sort of freestyle the shaping around the bust after I had sewed together the general pieces. And you'll see me talk about that in a minute. Okay, so this is what the bodice looks like at this point, and I cannot lie to you, I am obsessed with it. I kind of just want it to be my new, like, going out shirt, but it's a pandemic, so we don't go out anymore, so I'm going to turn it into a medieval dress. Um, one thing I didn't think about was how this fabric doesn't have any structure to it. It's so loosey-goosey that the neckline is warping, but I'm hoping that two things are going to help with that. One is going to be the trim, which does not have a stretch, so hopefully that will hold this all in place better. And then also, there's supposed to be little pleats along the top of the neckline, but I didn't want that look, so I'm going to do darts, but I didn't put them in because I wanted to fit it on myself. So hopefully that is going to make all of this fit nicer and be that nice boxy neckline that I'm going for. Although, I do not hate this off-the-shoulder look. Again, I might just make this after I'm done with the dress, um, just like as... A new shirt for the everyday for you know a Tuesday. I am super pleased with how the sleeves came out and pleased with how far down 
I sewed them and how open my arms are and in my head they were wider but honestly this is fine because the skirt's gonna have plenty of volume too. So yeah the next thing I'm gonna do is do those pleats and then sew the skirt on. So this is the process I go through to put those darts in. I basically just pinch the fabric so that it lays nicely against my body and then I put some pins in to hold it in place. I do it on both sides to get an idea of what it will look like, but once I take it off, I will measure those darts to see how long they are and how wide they are, and then I will find the average and redraw both of them with that average so that they are exactly identical. After sewing those darts in place, I sewed the skirt together and then tried to gather it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember exactly what gathering technique I used. I just remember that it led to this clip. So, this is not going what I would call well. And it's late. So I'm going to go to bed and make this a problem for another day. Okay, so as I said in the last clip... The gathering was not working, and that was on me. We caught me slipping. I should not have been winging it the way I was with stretch velvet. I should have had a game plan. So I did come in with a game plan, and that game plan was box pleats. Um, they go all the way around. I did not measure them, but I did the little foldy and halfy thing that I'm very fond of doing, and I feel confident that they're gonna be like pretty even. You know, um, in my medieval fantasy world, we're saying that, like, rulers and measurements don't exist because the wizards took them away or something. Anyway, so it's like, oh, they can't measure anything. Why should I expect these lines to be straight and these things to be even? Because um, in a fantasy world, you can say whatever you want. Anyway, one thing I'd love you to know about this amazing fabric is that it is dyeing everything like this purple, blue, black color. So I don't even know if you can tell, but I have like splotches on my face. Maybe in a mirror isn't the best way to do this. But yeah, like up here you can see it looks like I have a bruise. It's not. It's dyed from the fabric that has gotten on my hands and then on my face. And let's see what else it's gotten on. It has gotten on this wall. It has gotten on my bedroom door. It has gotten on the inside of my bathroom door and on top of my bathroom light switch. And it has gotten on my computer. Um, so yeah, those are the perils of buying online discount fabric. Check out my pumpkin though. I carved it in the woods on a camping trip with my sister. I'm really proud no one's seen it because no one comes to our house so you guys can see it. Look at this. Look, you did this. It was you. All right, eventually I got past all that rage and I calmed down and I sewed that skirt in all its box pleated glory to the bodice. So this is what it looks like after being sewn together and I cannot lie, all her sins are forgiven, all my frustrations with this dress have melted away and I am obsessed and it's so comfortable and I love the movement of it. I love the way the sleeves and the skirt go together. Um, I am really pleased with how this project is working out. I've just got to get that trim on it and do some hemming. I am presently debating how I'm going to hem the sleeves because they won't fray. And if I don't hem them, they won't be bulky or, you know, they won't have that bulk of the hem, and they'll be more light, but I am worried about the fabric curling, because, oh my gosh, the edges of the skirt and the shirt curled so much while I was trying to sew them together. It was so frustrating. And I don't want the sleeves to get reduced inside, because they're curling in on themselves. So I might hem them. I Surging them would probably help, but I'm lazy. 
and I don't want to re-thread my serger, it's not threaded right now. But anyway, this is what it looks like right now. I'm very pleased. Next, it was on to pinning all of that trim in place, which I did in bed because there's no law against it. And sitting next to me, you can see my loyal companion and devoted son, Mr. Creepy Peanut Man. So I'm currently wearing it just pinned in place, and it's not exactly as square as I wanted it to be when I envisioned it, and that's causing the front to lay a little wonky. So I think I'm actually going to do some repinning and see if I can get these into 90 degree angles. The back is a little better. I think the back is laying fine, but we're gonna mess with the front and we might have to mess with the back. But trial and error, it will work out. Oh look, I repinned it and it did work out. Nice 90 degree angles. The next thing I did was sew all that trim in place and there isn't actually footage of that because I spent so long getting all my supplies in order around me that my camera had actually shut off. But I wanted to show you this footage anyway because I thought my outfit was really cute. While I have you here watching this useless footage, I'm going to give you a few other facts about this project. So this was actually the last step because I did not hem it. I did not hem the sleeves or the hem because I was really lazy and this fabric did not fray. And once again, in my fantasy world, there is no hemming. Also, this dress has no closures because it is a stretchy fabric and I sewed everything with a zigzag stitch so that it just stretches right on and off, which is part of why it is so comfortable. Seriously, it's like wearing pajamas but looking like a queen. I'm really in love with it. And I'm also going to go ahead and let you know that in A Cruel Twist of Fate, my SD card was corrupted and I lost most of the clips and the pictures that my younger sister was so kind to take for me at the final reveal of this dress. Like seriously, she and I did some minor trespassing on a national fraternity headquarters because it was so beautiful and perfect and I lost the footage and I'm so sorry to her. But anyway, I know this video has been kind of a train wreck technically, but I think the final product is beautiful so maybe you'll forgive me.